All right, round two. Second video in two days. We'll see how this goes. So first, again, I'm sharing videos about cross stitch. Everybody seems to be talking about that now. Um, yes, this is a video about cross stitch. Channels about cross stitch 99.9% .9 of the time with some life stuff put in there. You know, I forgot to mention something yesterday when I came to my, my big comeback. The, um, probably importantly, you need to let everybody know, I cuss like a sailor. I mean, like a freaking sailor. So one just slips out there. Sorry, not meant to offend anybody, but it's normal language for me. So if it offends you, sorry, that's it. I'm not going to say it again. Thought about doing whip parade. That is going to be a multi take video. So I think I will probably do that a little bit at a time over the next week and uh, go from there. So for now, though, I thought as just to keep y'all caught, get y'all caught up on what I've been doing for at least the last year. I pulled out my 2023 finishes, at least all of them that I can. And uh, some of them have been FFO'd already. Some of them are put away and I'll have to insert pictures of them um, because they're, you know, Christmas ornaments or whatever that are put away in the Christmas stuff. So I have them all stacked up next to me over here. I am standing at my sit stand desk. Because I think that would be easier. And I may have to take a break because it's allergy season here in South Texas. Um, we have lots of cedar. So, you know, I have my ever present Coke. Or sweet tea. Either one will work. Coke helps a little better with the phlegm because of the fizz. But without further ado, these are my 2023 finishes. You know what? No, before I get started on that, have you all seen an Instagram? There's a thing called a guide where you can put multiple pictures like in a group. I am still, I, I don't really profess to be an Instagram expert by any means. I still learn new things about it all the time. I don't know if the guide is something new or if it's just something I just discovered, but I was able to group all of my finishes into one guide for 2023, I mean 2022, excuse me. And same thing with FFOs. And then I've started the same for 2023. I'm a little behind. I need to put some I have two FFOs I need to put in there. But you can't share them like on your feed like you normally would. And I'm not sure if they're accessible by other people. So not sure how that works. I'd like to do how like the story highlight things. But I think you have to make it a story when you post it originally. And then you can edit the story highlights. Somebody will have to, you know, somebody who's like really Instagram proficient, that might be something cool to uh, let us all know about. But for right now, I'm putting them in a guide just to help me keep track of where my 2022 finishes are, 2022 FFOs, and then I started the same for 2023. I just realized that I don't have the details of this because I'm recording on my phone. So let me see if I can still record. It's one thing I love about this phone. Well, hell, it cut off somewhere in the middle of Solo Tua when I had that big goof. Okay, so we're going to back up to Solo Tua and I'm going to go back to finish that one. So, anyway, Solo Tua ran out of beads partway through, had to go to Hobby Lobby because I couldn't get any in quickly. And honestly, I think the ones down here in the tail are the ones for the Hobby Lobby jewelry beads. And the ones up here are the Mill Hill. And honestly, I can't tell the difference. <laughs> so if you're ever in a pinch, you can find beads at Hobby Lobby in the jewelry section. Uh, did the one over one skin. I always keep telling myself I'll never do that again, but it looks amazing. So who knows? Yeah, pretty happy with that one. Love all the pink. Next finished, well, oh, and I finished that one on, let's see, January 30th. I'm trying not to put my finger in front of the camera, which is over there. Next one finished was February Sampler by uh, Country Cottage Nail Works. And same thing there, did not get it FFO'd. Um, that was February 11th. And apparently I finished that one on the plane. Oh, and that was when they broke my suitcase again. Fun, fun. 
Tell me, yeah, don't buy, don't ever buy suitcases again. If the airline buys your suitcase, I mean, <laughs> the airline ruins your suitcase, they'll buy you a new one. I'm on like my fourth one that American Airlines has replaced. So, yeah, there's that. Okay, next up, Christmas Silhouette. This is a pattern out of Stony Creek Magazine. Don't ask me which one, because I don't know. It's a long time ago. Um, it's probably in my Instagram somewhere. But it was an ornament, and I decided to stitch it twice. I can hold on to it. And turn it into a biscornium. And my buddy Cindy Zufall, who's in our local stitching group, taught me how to make it into a biscornium with one of our stitchy days. And of course I had to be extra and put the beads around the outside. And thanks to Cindy's amazing teaching, it was super easy and I love it. I don't know if I'll ever do another one, but I love it. And I don't know when exactly I finished that, but it doesn't matter. I finished the first side, let's see. I finished the first one on February 20th. All right, the March sampler was next. I will have to insert a picture here. Because that one's been FFO'd and I do not have it. It's in the box with all of the rest of the March uh, items. I'm oh, sorry, I keep getting off camera. And apparently I finished the other side of the Biscornu March 8th. Because I needed to finish it up before our stitchy day. Oh, the next one is a big one. Okay, Red Velvet Cake by Glendon Place. I finished this on March 20th. This took absolutely way longer than it should have. It is done on a vintage silk weaver. I want to call it, say it's called Strawberry Milkshake. And done with all of the silks and the called for beads. And it is very heavy. I don't know if you can see all the beads in there, but it is very, very bead heavy and it's amazing and I love it and I need to take this framer and get it done framed professionally because it took forever to do and it deserves to be framed professionally. All right next up. Oh, what did I do with it? There it goes. I had them in order so I could just pick them up. April Sampler. Isn't that one adorable? With the little bunnies. Kind of hard to see the bunnies are in white down there but they're real chicks. And that one was finished April 8th. And then next up was Miss Solar Ellipse, another Nora Corbett. Love how that one turned out. I did not do one over one skin on that one. Could have. That was a lot smaller. Totally should have. Uh, that one was done April 20th. And then next up was a Mill Hill Starfish, which I just need to put in the frame, which so there's no reason the thing should not be FFO because I have the frame. It's a lack of time. I can't remember the camera's over there. So yeah, it goes, yes, that's up. Lots and lots and lots of beads. I don't know if you can see all those or not, but love how that turned out. I finished that on May 8th. Ah, next up, it's, I don't know what the exact name of this pattern is. It's something Margarita by Casey, and I'm going to butcher the name, Wanagario. Um, so my friend Tracy Rickert, she um, modified the pattern and gave the little project all to us as a gift at one of our um, Texas Stitcher retreats. And I finished it. And it, so basically, the this is the... The margarita glass that's at the bottom of the bigger pattern. Sorry, I'm looking in the wrong place. And so we didn't do the top. Um, we basically just did this piece. And so Tracy literally gave us everything to create with, except for I think the stuffing. I think I had to stuff it. The beads that make the salt. Doesn't that so cute? And then Tracy makes these. Isn't that beautiful? The little pin that goes in. Just freaking adorable. So mate got that one actually FFO'd. We had a little uh, FFO day with our local group, uh, Cindy and Regina and myself, and we got um, I got this done as part of that. So turned out really cute. Pretty happy with that. And I finished the stitching on that June 11th. I don't remember what day we had our finishing day. Next up is from Screen Screen Porch Designs, Screen Door Designs. Hang on, I think I have it in here. 
screen door needlework, excuse me. Um, God bless Texas. Turned it into a little pillow with blue bonnet fabric on the back. Thought it turned out pretty cute. And I finished that on June 22nd. Uh, my narwhal, the Bent Creek narwhal um, that's in a snow globe. It is finished, FFO'd, and at the condo in San Antonio. You guys don't know about that. <laughs> okay, break time. In the four years since I've talked to you, the, um, the younger kiddo is going to college for chemical engineering. And so she did her first year and a half, two years, whatever she could do of her um, prerequisites for a lot of classes here in at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Um, lots cheaper to live at home, right? And trying to get my kids out of school, out of college debt free. Goal in life. No debt. And uh, so far, we're doing good. Then she transferred to Texas A&M Kingsville for the chemical engineering program. I don't know if any of y'all know. I don't know how much they covered on the national news in other places, but we have a border crisis going on in Texas and Kingsville is on the immigrant superhighway. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, was not really comfortable with where she was with a lot of the stuff that's going on um, down there. So uh, wanted to uh, put her in a safer place. And she was uh, not really happy. Kingsville is a very small town and her roommates and at the apartment we were renting, um, three other roommates were already roommates beforehand. She ended up being a, a fourth and a fourth wheel and um, two of them were sisters. So it was, it was not a good situation. Um, she, she stayed there a whole semester. She did finish. She finished all her classes, got good grades, but we decided to transfer her to UTSA, University of Texas, San Antonio to their chemical engineering program over the summer. And she did her, or no, was that, hang on. What time is it? Yes, last summer. So her first semester, is that right? Yeah, she finished in May in Kingsville, May of 2021. We literally had two days and we went on our Alaska cruise. And then we bought the condo in San Antonio because it's cheaper than rent. <laughs> That's about eh, 10 minutes from, from UTSA. And it's in a gated community. She doesn't have to share it with anybody. So she's happy with no roommates. And, uh, and hey, I have a place to stay when I go to San Antonio now, which is awesome. So the, um, yeah, there's that. Anyway, that's where the narwhal is. <laughs> the narwhal, back to the original, the narwhal is finished and hanging in the condo in San Antonio. So I'll put an, a picture in here of the finished product. And it was done June 25th of 2022. And it's really freaking cute. Next one is Potions, Brews, and Spells. This one I'm going to have to step back and pull up so you can see the whole thing. And this came out of one of the um, Just Cross Stitch Halloween issues. I would be lying if I could tell you which one. The details would be somewhere in my um, Instagram feed. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that was done July 14th. Was a long time coming. Um, I was working on this for a really long time, but that bottom section, it's all over one. So that took a little bit. All right, let's see. Back up. Next one is Summertime. And I think this is from Rose Cottage Stitches. Really cute worked on this when we were on our um, cruise. Most of these, I'm sure I don't know the names of the fabric. I know that the um, Solar Ellipse was Sunny Dyes fabric since she's no longer making fabric, unfortunately. But hey, there's a tag on this one, so I can tell you. This is 32 count Lugana in Valkyrie by Under the Sea Fabrics. And I still have the other half of the fabric to do something else with. So I just need to cut it off. And that one was finished July 26th. This one got worked on while we were on the Alaska cruise. Not a lot, but it did get worked on because we were busy. I mean, my whole family went. Um, my mom and dad, my sister and her significant other. So it was, uh, we were busy, busy, busy the whole time. 
Next finish was the Philanthropic Pumpkin. As you can see, I have still not worked up the courage to FFO it. I have all, all the stuff. Uh, actually, got to meet Kathy um, when I went to the Silver Needle. Um, Cindy and I went up there for one of their uh, retreats um, classes with Cindy. Um, when Cindy and I went to Kathy's class on called the Top Drawer, and uh, my, that was uh, this 2021 finish. Anyway, I will show you that later if you really, really, really want to see it. It's fun. And Kathy is amazing with her finishing instructions. So, and so I had her sideline. Cool, right? Um, so, yes, I will eventually build up the courage to finish that. And that one was done August 23rd, 2022. Next one, this is so cute, Satsuma Street Designs. Oh, I need something to put behind it. Little baddie. Her ornaments are just so stinking cute. I have a couple more that I would love to do. Just haven't gotten around to him yet. Obviously, I need to just cut him out, put some backing on him, and he'd be done. But look at all the cute little sequins. He's adorable. And that one was finished on October 3rd, 2022. Next one is Texas by Hinzeit. And this one was finished. Oops, my little... One more was flipped up. There we go. Now we go in the right direction. Uh, there's like multiple mistakes in this darn thing. That flag being offset was weird. That was finished October 15th. And then, of course, you know I had to do the HOD costume party, Sal. So there's that one. And this really needs to be FFO'd. I bought one of the cute... Um, uh, little Halloween haunted houses from Chantel to put it on, but I gotta paint it first before I can do that. So just gotta get that done. And I finally finished that sucker on October 16th. I was way behind. Again, start along, not stitch along. <laughs> All right, let's see. Next finish was a cute little kit from Dimensions called Via Flamingo and a flock of pigeons. It's just called Via Flamingo, but it's, uh, it's, the blue is pre-printed. You just stitch the flamingo in the words. And it was, I mean, I think it took me two days to do it. It was really cute. Um, that was done on October 17th. And then Autumn Spice. I think this is it. It's so Emma. And I did this just on a random piece of banding that I had in my stash. And I'm going to finish it into a bow pole. We're going to fold up, you know, so they look like so. With a cute little thing on the bottom. But there's that. And this was used about the pattern and the floss that I used for is all substituted. And of course I took the It's Autumn or whatever off the end and just put Autumn because it wouldn't fit. Um, but these are all from, I forget what the name of the floss is, but it came from our local quilt shop and it actually is a little thicker than uh, DMC. stitches up quite nicely. And that was finished on October 23rd. Next one, so initially finished stitching on Electra a long time ago, like 2020 or 2021, but this is a Sunny Dice fabric, I think it's called Into the Woods, I think, maybe, of course Sunny Dice doesn't do fabric anymore, so sorry you can't get it, but when I, I wanted, I left out the moon that would normally be here at Electra, because I wanted to use the moon in the fabric. But I couldn't figure out how to place her to make the moon relevant. And I puzzled and, you know, noodled on it for a while and decided that I took the bats that you can see up there around the moon from a different Nora Corbett pattern. And I'll be darned if I can remember which one. It actually, it says it on the Instagram post, October 24th was when I finished the bats. And I thought that pulled it in a little bit better. And of course I did my own color version of her skin and her wings because I really liked the green better. I thought it was cool. And that thing is bead heavy. Right there in the middle, there is uh, there's a few beads missing because I couldn't make them all fit. And this is a 28 count fabric, so there's a lot of beads in there. All right, let's see. 
Again, sorry for my finger being in front of the camera. All right, next one was Welcome to the Beach by Hinsight. Finally got the uh, charm sewn onto it. Love that. It's kind of like a little beach scene in the background. I don't know if you can see that. It's like a uh, umbrella on either end with the beach in the middle. Love those little patterns. Their customer service is non-existent. Um, finished out October 29th. And then this is my biggie finish for the year. I think this is the last one I finished. Was oh no, it's not the other one is put away. <laughs> Angel of the Sea by Lavender and Lace. This was my oldest whip before I started before I pulled out the last supper. They were started probably about the same in within the same year of each other, probably around 2005, 2006. And so I finally, that's the first one I decided to do the 25-7 on. I stitch on it literally every single day. And finally got it all done with all the beads. Tons of beads down there at the bottom. It's just absolutely beautiful. Tons of beads up there around the top. And it turned out very nicely. Very happy that it's finally done. This one also needs to go to a professional farmer. That one I finished on November 9th. And then last but not least, my last finish of the year was Evergreen Sleigh by Mill Hill. One of the 12 Christmas ornaments that I started in um, December, 12 Days of Christmas. And it is finished, FFO'd, and put away in the Christmas ornament box. So I'll have to put in a picture here. of that particular finish. Okay, that's all my finishes. That doesn't seem like a lot, right? Although some of them are pretty big. So um, that's it for now. I will, uh, you know what? I have the top drawer thing over here from Kathy. Give me two seconds. Okay, so I'm on the bookshelf. So you had pre-stitching that you had to finish before you went. You got one great big piece of linen to, to put them all on. And then you cut it and you subdivided it and stitched on each of your pieces. And then you cut it into pieces when you got there and you made all the fun things. I think we started actually making the drawer. So we made this drawer completely on site at the Silver Needle. This was the hardest part, punching the hole through all that um, mat board and stuff. But they have really good tool to use. It even has little feet on the bottom. Just great, great instructions. Can't say enough about it. Uh, um, putting this together was really fun. Um, I learned an absolute ton. So got a little padding in there, all, all covered with a nice cool pink cotton that all um, coordinates. And then our stitch pieces. So this is, um, heck, I don't remember what it's called. But you put all the little twining on it with the pins. There's a magnet in the front or the back. I don't remember which one, but now, on the front, hold it up strong enough to hold your scissors. And uh, so you can use it for a, uh, you know, just a needle rest or even poke your needles into it. There's that little guy. And then two scissor fobs, which I'm not a big fan of scissor fobs, especially gigantic ones. So those are the two ones, but they're still cute as they can be. Backed with the coordinating fabric. And one of these I put together way better than the other. And the other one, I just kind of got impatient because I wanted to get it finished. And you see that nice big gap right there. <laughs> but not Kathy's fault at all, all only mine. And then last but not least was the needlebook. So let me, okay, so front obviously has alphabet on it. You put your initials on the back. You had to make sure that you put them on the right direction as you were sewing it together, as you were uh, stitching, because obviously it was one long piece of stitching, so it was opposite of here and here to make sure you put them in the right way. And then on the inside, and we sewed all of this together by hand, which is unusual for me because I don't hand stitch, I don't hand sew. Um, I'm, a, I'm a quilter and I like to use my machine for everything I can use. You sewed on your little tie, you sewed on your little holder to hold it closed and then here's where you can put all of your different needles or pins 
I will profess I do not use this. It is decoration only, but it's adorable. And then Kathy gave us this cute little peppermint with some pins in it because that's what the top drawer came from. Is there was always peppermint in the top drawer of her, I'm going to say grandmother. I can't remember for sure. And of course there's like the little thread drop holder, which not a fan of thread drops, so don't use that either. I uh, just keep it there as a little decoration. But very happy that course, that class was fantastic. If you ever have the chance to take a class at the Silver Needle, I highly recommend it. It was fun. Lots of shopping. Um, <laughs> it was absolutely fantastic. My daughter went with us. Um, we, it was in it was in October of 21, and we had a great time. Hannah went and just explored around Tulsa while we were there. And we went to went out to eat in several different places and had fun. And we went and did an escape room that was absolutely freaking amazing. Um, it was really good. It was on the Winchester um, family, Winchester Mansion. So, yeah, that's a little little catching up. And, and all of my 2023, 2022, excuse me, finishes. And so now i got to put all this together and put in pictures of things. So it might take me a minute to get it all updated. I don't know when it will end up getting posted. But I'm going to sign off for now and say it's good to be back. Thank you, everyone, for welcoming me back. Um, so many nice comments on my first video. I really, really, really appreciate it. And hopefully I can keep this up. So bye for now. And I will try to do bits and pieces of my whip parade here and there and get it all put together. Have a great day.